Hi, this is Brianna from the Champaign-Urbana Community Fab Lab. If you've been to our lab before and you've sewn there, you've probably noticed this strange looking sewing machine sitting around. It's a serger or an overlocking machine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to thread the machine and tell you about some of the things that it can help you sew. Sergers are really great for making professional looking seams and speeding up sewing, especially when you're constructing garments. And sergers sew lightweight materials and materials that have some stretch to them much better than an ordinary sewing machine. So how does a serger work? In an ordinary sewing machine, the needle and the bobbin create a lock stitch. The serger, by contrast, doesn't use a bobbin at all. Instead, three or four cones of thread are loaded into the machine and threaded through four needles. The bottom two needles are called loopers. This creates a stitch that can stretch and move, and a serger can chain the thread together whether there's fabric running through the machine or not. Okay, let's thread the machine. The first thing I do is raise the thread guide. If the thread guide isn't raised, the machine won't work properly. Next, I load four spools of thread onto the back. This is ordinary thread, not serger thread, but it's easier to tell where the thread is going if they're different colors. Next, I open up the front of the serger. You can see that there's a diagram on the right that shows me where the thread is supposed to go through the machine and what thread to start with. I'm starting with the first thread, which is the pink. There are two thread guides on our machine. First, I put it over the telescoping thread guide that I put up in the beginning. And second, I put it through a metal thread guide on top of the machine. There's a diagram on the right that shows you which direction the thread is supposed to go through. The thread then runs through a tension disc. You might see me pull the thread a little bit to make sure that it's totally engaged in that tension disc. The first thread passes through the machine, so it's the hardest to get right. This will be almost impossible to do without a set of tweezers. I'm passing the thread through color-coded thread guides. The first thread goes through the mint green guides. I can turn the wheel toward myself to move it into an easier position. I never turn the wheel away from myself because that can mess up the timing of the machine. Next, I use tweezers to pass the thread to my left hand on the left side of the machine. This takes some practice, so if you need help, let somebody know. Sergers come with these huge cones of thread because people don't really like threading them, and so they want to do it as infrequently as possible. Lots of people just keep black thread and white thread on hand and use the black thread with dark fabrics and the white thread with light fabric so that they don't have to change thread very frequently. However, you can have a lot of cool effects if you use different colors of thread. You can load it up with four different colors of thread if you want kind of a rainbow effect for an exposed seam. I'm turning the wheel again to bring that looper towards the right hand side of the sewing machine so that I can see where the thread is and pull it out with the tweezers. Now I put the thread through the eye of the looper. I then use the tweezers to pull the thread out towards the back of the machine. And now my first looper is threaded. The green thread is for the second looper, and this is all going to be a lot easier from here on in. So I take the green thread and I put it over the telescoping thread guide, and then into the metal thread guide at the top of the machine. Again, it needs to go in in the same direction that the diagram shows. It goes through the tension disc. And then I follow the directions on the sewing machine below. This looper is much easier to put the thread through because you don't have to pass the thread through the machine. I turn the wheel towards myself to get that needle into the right position. I pass the thread through the guides. I trim it a little bit. And I put it through the eye of the looper. I use the tweezers to pull the thread towards the back of the machine. And then I can close up the bottom of the machine. The rest of the threading is going to be very familiar because it's going to be more like a normal sewing machine. The thread for the two needles also passes through the thread guides. It also goes through the tension disc. And then you need to move the wheel towards yourself to get the needle into the right position. To use the tweezer is to pass it through the eye of the first needle. Now I'm putting in the last thread. This also goes through both thread guides through a tension disc and follows almost the same path as the other thread that goes to the other upper needle. I pull the thread towards the back of the machine using the tweezers and now my machine is threaded. Now I'm going to test my machine to see if it's working properly. The serger needs to start on a piece of fabric to make the chain stitch. The serger uses a knife to cut off the excess fabric making a really neat even seam. This is what the machine sounds like. If your machine doesn't chain, when you try it out, the best thing to do is to take all the thread out and thread it all over again. 